temp is a nice temple. You've been there, Mataji, right? And right in the, alongside of the temple is a huge garden, big, big garden. We've been there when we had festivals with hundreds of devotees in the garden. But it's a very special temple. Uh, there are deities of uh, Balaram and Revati and Kalindi and Tota Gopinath. He's there. And there's one more altar. I'm not sure the other deities on that altar. Three altars. But that deity was given to Lord to uh, Gadadhar to worship. And Gadadhar took what we call Shetra Sanyas. Shetra Chanats means you, you dedicate your life to worship, staying in a particular place. Shetra means hold, holy place. And you stay there and you worship the deity to the end of your life. You dedicate your life to the service of that deity. And that became Gadadhar Pandit's Ista Day for the worship of Lord. And in that, um, he worshiped the deity. But Lord Chaitanya one decided to go traveling one time, and Gadadhar Pandit wanted to go with him. And Lord, Lord Chaitanya said, "You can't go because you have taken Shetra Chinas Chinas. You dedicated your life to that." But he was, he said, "You can't leave Gopinath." And Gadadhar Pandit said, "Wherever you are, Gopinath is also there, because <laughs> you are none different than Gopinath." But that didn't convince Lord Chaitanya because he was very strict with his vows. He would follow his vows very rigidly. When he took sannyas, he followed the sannyas very rigidly. When he was a grihasta, he followed the principles of grihasta life very rigidly. To teach by example that one sh should follow the principles of their ashram and not deviate for any reason... And so when Gadadhar Pandit wanted to travel with Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya refused to take him. And Gadadhar Pandit became very morose and did everything he could to convince Lord Chaitanya that he should go with him. So Lord Chaitanya wouldn't listen. And then at one point Gadadhar Pandit said, to hell with my Shetra Sanyas, <laughs> going with you. That's the actual words that are used. I didn't make that up. <laughs> That's the actual words. <laughs> so, uh, Lord Chaitanya decided to go anyway, and so he was getting into a boat ready to leave Puri, along with one of his assistants, and Gadadhar was following. So, Rabon Bhattacharya was also there. And uh, the Lord just turned around, and didn't even look at Gadadhar, got into the boat and left. Gadadhar was mortified. He fainted out of separation from the Lord. And Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya was there after he woke up and he said, the Lord loves you, but he wants to make sure you follow your vows. But he'll be back, don't worry. The Lord was supposed to go to Vrindavan, but he never got to Vrindavan. He got as far as... Ramakali. He went to Ramakali where he met Srup and Sanatan Goswami there. And at that time, little Jiva Goswami, the nephew of uh, Rupa and Sanatan Goswami, was also there. And that's the first time they actually met Lord Chaitanya after they had gotten freed from their... Uh... No, actually, Lord Chaitanya told them at that time, get yourself freed from the the service of the Muslims. And that's a beautiful exchange between Lord Chaitanya Gadara and uh, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Jiva Goswami was only about, when he was a young boy, he was just watching from a distance. And uh, the Lord was gone, leaving Ramakali. That's a wonderful story. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of details left out because that was a very dangerous area. There was a lot of pirates, a lot of Muslims, and there was a war going on, and so many things. But Lord Chaitanya was fearless, and he went despite that. There's that one story where Lord Chaitanya, as he was traveling, thousands of people were following him. And one of the assistants, the governor of the Muslim, 
he saw that and he was very favorable to Lord Chaitanya. He knew Lord Chaitanya. And he, he was afraid that this governor, who was a Muslim despot, really a cruel guy, would do something. So when he inquired, who is this mendicant, this sannyasi, he's traveling, and he's got so many followers, the Muslim assistant said, he's, he's, just, he's actually just some ordinary sannyasi, and he only has a few followers. And the Muslim got angry. He said, what do you mean? He's actually the supreme personality of God. <laughs> and we should welcome him and allow him to do whatever he wants. Don't impede him in any way. <laughs> so even the Muslim leader was purified simply by the presence of Lord Chaitanya. And then he was, after he met Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, he was going to go on his way to Brindavan, but... Sanatana Goswami said, this doesn't look so good. You're going to Vrindavan, you're going to a holy place with so many followers, you look like a charlatan, a cheap, you know, with so many cheap followers, all saying Kijai, you know. <laughs> so he thought uh, better to turn. So he went a little ways and then he realized Sanatana Goswami was right. So he turned around and went back. And then he went, traced these steps all the way back and he went right back to Jagannath Puri. Gadadhar Pandit was so happy, the devotees were amazed the Lord had returned so quickly. Well, it was only about a month later. And uh, when the devotees asked, why did you come back? Why didn't you go to Vrindavan? He said, Krishna would not allow me to go to Vrindavan because I committed an offense to Gadadhar Pandit. <laughs> and there was a message in that story where although Gadadhar Pandit was not offended by the Lord, still he was put into what we say transcendental unhappiness by the pre by the separation from the Lord. So because of his, Lord Chaitanya considered him the cause of that happiness himself. So he said, I committed an offense to Gadadhar Pandit, therefore Krishna wouldn't let me go. to Vrindavan. And the message is one should never cause any dis- comfort to a devotee in any way, either through body, minds, or speech, and that is considered to be a transgression of Vaishnava etiquette. In many cases, it's caused to be offense. <laughs> so the Lord was back. Everyone was happy. Gadan, I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. <laughs> I haven't looked at my notes on this pastime for a couple of years, so I'm kind of like a little rusty about the pastime. So Lord Chaitanya stayed in Puri. He spent 18 years in Jagannath Puri and six years he traveled. The last six years he was in transcendental ecstasy. And towards the end he used to go with his devotees and go to the same temple with Gadadhar Pandit's deity, Gopinath, and they would have kirtan there. They would have the most amazing kirtans. And one time they had a powerful kirtan. And during the kirtan, Lord Chaitanya left. And nobody noticed There's him disappearing while the kirtan was going on. But after a few minutes, everyone felt some unhappiness. Usually during the kirtan, you don't feel unhappy. <laughs> you feel kind of happy. And uh, everyone thought, oh no, he's gone. And then when they looked, they couldn't find him anywhere. He had left the world. He went into the, there's a mark on the deity's leg. You've seen that mark? Anybody? Mataji, in Duleka, did you see the mark on, the, on Gopinath's leg? The Pajari show you. On his right leg, I think, there's a mark. And they say that's where Lord Chaitanya entered into that deity. He disappeared. He merged into the body of that deity, Gopinath deity. There's other stories of his disappearance. Some say he went into the ocean, and some say he went into the deity of Jagannath. <laughs> There's three stories. We don't accept the ocean one at all. The one with Jagannath has some authority, but the one that is accepted by the Gaudi of Vaishnav is that the Lord Chaitanya went into the deity of Gadadhar Pandit, or Gopinath, just to show Gadad, his love for Gadadhar Pandit. <laughs> Because Gadadhar Pandit was Radharani, 
And Lord Chaitanya is Krishna, but he's also in the mood of Radharani. So Radharani appeared twice, <laughs> both as Lord Chaitanya and as Gadadhar Pandit. So in that, uh, and uh, they were, Lord Chaitanya left the world when he was 48 years old. So he wasn't very old. And uh, Kadadhar Pandit continued to serve that deity. Srinivasacharya was living in Jajigram, and he came to Navadweep to meet Lord Chaitanya, but he heard that Lord Chaitanya was in Jagannath Puri. So he wanted to uh, wanted to meet Lord Chaitanya, and he wanted to also learn Srimad Bhagavatam. So he was directed to Puri, but when he got to Puri, the word was that he had left the world. So he was very saddened. So they told him that he could learn Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar Pandit. And Gadadhar Pandit would every day read Bhagavatam to Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya would sit and Gadadhar Pandit would read. And his favorite stories were um, Pallad Maharaj and Dhruva Maharaj. That was his two favorite stories. He would read those. And he would read the whole story and then Lord Chaitanya would say, would say read it again. And he would finish reading it and then he would say, read it again. <laughs> and it's described by Vrindavan Das Thakur, the author of Chaitanya Bhagavat, that the Lord would Listen to that those pastimes up to 100 times. Because Gadadhar Pandit was so sweet and so gentle. He was the epitome of sweetness and gentle. He was just, oh, just a, everyone loved Gadadhar Pandit. So simple, so sweet, so gentle. And, the, and Radharani's not usually in that mood. She's like, you know, we use the word in English, feisty. Feisty means she does what she wants. <laughs> it's called lawless love. <laughs> love with no rules. <laughs> but in her mood of Gadadhar Pandit, she was completely submissive to Lord Chaitanya. Completely submissive. And so when... The Lord had left. Gadadhar Pandit used to read the same Bhagavatam, and he would cry. And he would cry so much that his tears would go on the Bhagavatam, and it would smear the ink, because it was written with, you know, ink, and they would scratch it in with this little needle like. You'd scratch it in, they'd dip it in the ink and scratch it like that. And uh, so when. He, Srinivasacharya came to learn from Gadadhar Pandit. He said, I'm sorry, I can't read my Bhagavatam. <laughs> so you take my Bhagavatam, you go back to the scribes in Navadvip, and you have it recopied, and then you bring it back and I'll teach you Bhagavatam. So Srinivasacharya left, but while he was gone, Gadadhar Pandit left the world. And it said that he was aging, Gadadhar Pandit was aging one year every day. Now he was only 48, and he, sta he stayed 11 months after Lord Chaitanya disappeared. So Lord Chaitanya disappeared. We're not sure of the actual date, but we know the year is 1534. And then... Or 1535, I'm not sure. 34, I think. And look, Gadadhar Pandit used to dress the deity of Gopinath, and the Gopinath deity is big. He's a tall deity. So in trying to dress him, he would try to put the crown on. And one day, when he was trying to put the crown on, it says because of his old age, and he was only 48, but because of his separation from Lord Chaitanya, his body was aging one year every day. So he was like an old man. And this one time when he was trying to lift the crown and put it on the head of the deity, Gopinath did something really amazing. Sat down. 
he sat down just to show his love for his devotee. And the deity is still in the sitting position now. You see him sitting with a flute. He's got his flute and he's cross-legged. <laughs> Where do you see a Krishna deity playing a flute cross-legged? But he was actually standing and he was a tall deity. But he actually sat down. And that was just, that was Krishna's way of showing his love for Gadadhar Pandit. And then right after that he left the world. When Srinivasacharya came back, he was more than that. He was twice as unhappy. Now Lord Chaitanya had left. Now Gadadhar Pandit left. So, but there are so many wonderful stories of Gadadhar Pandit. When Lord Chaitanya would not listen to Balabacharya. Balabacharya was a great devotee. There's a Balava Sampradaya. It's called Pushti Marg. Sumati Marariji, the one that sponsored Prabhupada's trip to America, she was a follower of Balabacharya. Now, Balabacharya was a great scholar, but he was proud. And Lord Chaitanya didn't like that. So he would come to Lord Chaitanya and said, Lord Chaitanya, you know, I have made a Srimad Bhagavatam commentary that surpasses Sridhar Swami's. Sridhar Swami is considered the foremost and authoritative commentator on Srimad Bhagavatam. And uh, Lord Chaitanya said, one who does not accept the Swami is a prostitute. <laughs> Because the word pa, Swami also means husband. So if a wife doesn't accept her husband, she's considered a prostitute. So he didn't know what to say. He was defeated. So another time he came, and then this time he said, I have compiled a whole series of names on Krishna. Lord Chaitanya said, I only know two names. Yasomati Nandana and Shamsundar, that's all. <laughs> and again, he kind of shut him up. <laughs> so the third time he came, and he came again, and he says, why do you chant Krishna's name? It says that we are wives of Krishna, and the, husband, the wife should never speak the name of her husband out loud. She should always call him Prabhu. That's Vedic culture, Vedic etiquette. And why do you speak Krishna's name out loud? So Lord Chaitanya said, yes, that's true. But if the husband says to the wife, speak my name, she must listen. <laughs> so therefore, Krishna is telling us, you chant my name. So that's a higher principle. So everything he did, Lord Chaitanya would defeat him. And he would be so upset. So... And he would try to push his commentary on the other devotees, and he would say, listen to what I wrote, and they would just leave. They wouldn't listen to him. So he went up to Gadadhar Pandit. Now, Gadadhar Pandit is real mild, very simple, very mild, very easy to be with. So he just sat down next to Gadadhar and started reading the commentary. <laughs> and Gadadhar Pandit knew Lord Chaitanya didn't like it. And at the same time, he knew all the other devotees were rejecting Vallabhacharya. But he had respect for Vallabhacharya, so he's caught in the middle. Here's this person reading to me. I don't want to make him feel bad by getting up and leaving. At the same time, I can't listen to him. <laughs> you ever find yourself in that situation? You go one way, you lose. You go the other way, you still lose. <laughs> So he didn't know what to do. So all he could do, he started to pray in his heart to Lord Chaitanya. My dear Lord, I don't really want to listen to him, but I don't know what I should do. I don't want to offend him either. So please forgive me. And so he prayed. And he stood there and listened. Later on, Srub Damodar Goswami pointed it out to Lord Chaitanya. He listened to Balabhachari. <laughs> Because Lord uh, Srup Damodar Goswami was very strict on Vaishnava etiquette, and whatever Lord Chaitanya wanted, he followed strictly. So when he when he knew that Gadadhar Pandit listened to Vallabhacharya, he told Lord Chaitanya, 
Uh, Lord Chaitanya didn't say anything because he knew the heart of Gadadhar Pandit. <laughs> but it was a difficult situation for Gadadhar Pandit. So that was his nature, very simple, very sweet, very gentle. Uh, you see, you can even see the deity on the altar. It's very soft. You look at Lord Chaitanya, he's, he's not so soft, but he's soft. <laughs> but Gadadhar is very soft. <laughs> So that's this Gadahar pun. There's many more stories I could tell, but it's ten o'clock. <laughs> so, th- which ones did you tell? Did you speak any stories tonight? The same ones I said. Oh, that one. That's the main story. Yeah. That one's a nice story. I'm sure if I if I tried to tell it, that would be like Balabacharya trying to overshadow Sridhar Swami's commentary. <laughs> so I will not try to be presumptuous and impudent by trying to overshadow your story. <laughs> Shasha is finding this very hilarious. <laughs> So I will not tell that story. Haribo. <laughs> he was the son of Madhava. Who was his father's name? Madhava? Madhava Mishra. That's right. Madhava Mishra. He had a brother also. Have you gone to, have you gone to that temple there? There's a temple in Navadweep on one of the islands. It's Gadadhar Pandit's, I think it's his home, or the, the home of his parents, Madhava Mishra. We go on it on the the the, uh, the Gormandala Parikar. We stop there for like two and a half seconds or something, real quick. Like that. So, that's all I have. There's other stories, but... Anyway, we worship Gadadhar Pandit, Panchatattva Makam Krishnam, Bhakta Rupa, Lord Chaitanya, Swarupa, Lord Nityananda, Sarupa Kam, Bhakta Avatar, and that's Gadadhar, I mean, uh, Advaita, Bhakta Kyam, Namami Shakti, Bhakti Shakti is Gadadhar Pandit, he's Shakti. And Srivas is also, he's considered to be Devotee, devotee of the Lord, Bhakta, Bhakta Rupa, Bhakta Rupa Rupa. So these five have come to make a statement to the impersonalist that God is not only one, he's five. <laughs> you think God is, is zero, but we tell you now he's not just one, he's five. <laughs> So, therefore, the Mayavadi philosophy gets dragged through the stool where it belongs. <laughs> Let's keep it there, too. Don't take it out. <laughs> so, that's a wonderful pastime. Okay, so, we should continue tomorrow. I'll try to remember a few more Pastimes. We pray to Gadadhar Pandit on this day. The appearance and disappearance days of great souls are opportunities to get their mercy. The mercy is always available, but on special days the mercy is even more available. If we're serious about devotional service, we will see that the success of our, our advancement in devotional services is being mercy seekers. We have to be mercy. So we have to be eager for the mercy. We have to be in the right place at the right time to get the mercy. That's also important. Being at the right place at the right time. Just like some of you here now are listening to Gadadhar and others are going... (laughs) They're getting different kind of mercy. (laughs) Nidra's mercy. 
So that kind of mercy, we always get that every day. But Gadadhar's mercy doesn't come so often. So we can pray. What do we pray for? We pray, to pray for something material means to punch yourself in the nose. Because <laughs> if you lose it in due course of time, and you can't have, be happy for when you got it anyway. So we pray for what? Devotion to Krishna, detachment from material activities, detachment from attraction to the material world. We play for service. Those who know deeply the path of bhakti know that the highest and most wonderful benefit is to serve. Just give me some service. That's all. <laughs> when Prahlad Maharaj was offered benedictions by Lord Nisringadeva after he killed his father, Ranyakashi, the Lord wanted to give him something. Prahlad just rejected every offer. And finally, Prahlad said, I don't worship you for something material. I worship you out of devotion, out of love. So the devotees find happiness simply in service. That's all. That's all. If we, if we can find happiness in service, we'll always find happiness in Krishna consciousness. Because that's what it means to be Krishna consciousness. To serve. That's all. Give me some service. That's all. What can I do to serve? And we're happy. Because Krishna is so nice, and to serve Krishna is the highest form of service. We serve our family members, we serve our friends, we serve our employers, we serve people in general, we even serve our own mind. And if we have a dog, we give him a bone, we serve him or some dog food, <laughs> cat food, whatever. But that guy, I mean, it doesn't give us much satisfaction. Serving the Lord fulfills the, heart, fills the heart with happiness and makes one peaceful and free from anxiety. Anxiety means when we're trying to get something from what we do. If we're trying to get something from whatever we do, We'll always be unfulfilled. You may get it. You may not. But if you're happy with service, and you're satisfied with service, and eager for service, you'll always be, what we say, you'll always be free from anxiety. Just let me serve. That's all. <laughs> And sometimes we want to serve in a certain way. All right, that's nice. But even higher than that, just give me some service. Any service, just serve. Okay, so... I'm a little bit concerned about you making sure you get some sleep. Samsara Dhavanala Lita Loka Tranayaka Where do they go? There's nobody here. <laughs> so we should try to take some rest. Or, yeah, right? Did everybody have Prashad? Yeah? Yeah, I had Prashad, okay. There's nothing left to do. <laughs> okay, so I have to take care of my deities and unpack them and put them on the altar and do 149 other things and then I'll <laughs> see you in the morning. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Gadadhar Pandit Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.